<clears throat> hey y'all, why did FaceTime here again? How you doing? Today I want to talk about insecurities. I feel like insecurity is something that we all have. And um, I want to make sure that I'm being able to produce a platform that's safe where people can discuss what they feel when they want throughout the entire world listening in. So instead of me just going live and, you know, doing pre-recorded, I think I want to also bring it back to Zoom. I did say that prior, I feel comfortable bringing it back to Zoom because I feel like sometimes people may want to talk about stuff, but don't want to talk about it on a platform where everyone can screenshot and record and, and peek in. They just want some more um, privacy or they want to, you know, be in like a, a safer feeling zone. So I think I'm going to start doing wine and FaceTime on Zooms. And um, I think that'll again give people the privacy and comfortability they want to talk without feeling like they don't want to listen to them. So again, wine and FaceTime, what I want to talk about again today is insecurities. Insecurities is something I think everyone has. So I wanted to like really discuss, you know, why do we have insecurities? Where do they come from? How do we get them? And what do we do with them? So for me, I feel like I have so many insecurities and like even to this present day. And for me, um, as a child, it was just pretty much, you know, feeling like I didn't fit in or I didn't look like a certain person or a certain group of kids or something like that. And even as an adult, was like still feeling like, you know, I'm not so comfortable in my skin when it comes to this and the third, you know? So for us, you know, people, black and brown people, women, men, children, everyone has insecurities and we all deal with insecurities differently. Some of us totally ignore them. Some of us actually try to work on them. And some of us just actually feel like, eh, it's whatever, you know, like I have my days I feel like I look good. I have my days I feel like I look bad. So, you know, we all have different aspects of how we feel about insecurities, how we deal with them, you know, where they come from, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to take a sip at this point. I just was like, real quick. A little bit more than a sip. So I feel like one of my first insecurities I had as a child was feeling like I was super tall taller than the rest of my peers or the girl on the end of the line in class, um, always looking bigger than my age. People always assumed I was more mature than I was, and I wasn't. Um, that followed by, you know, quickly identifying that, you know, I stood out more and started noticing other things about me that stood out that I didn't really pay much attention to, like my feet. By the time I was 11 years old, I was already wearing a size nine in women, and I was already five, eight and a half or five, nine, and I was about 140 pounds already, and I had little hips, little knobs, little butt, and um, I just felt like my body was, you know, didn't match my age, you know, pretty much. Um, so those insecurities took me for a while because I started to notice that I would hunch sometimes, you know, and like appear smaller or like, you know, one is only be around people that were my height. So I didn't feel like the oddball all the time. Or I would find myself, you know, trying to tag back home and just be more homebody type of person. And I think I'm still a homebody type of person as well. But um, pretty much insecurities for me definitely took over my life and had me in my head more than I need to because I'm already um, a procrastinator and I'm already a person that overthinks. So that just wasn't good for me. So I'm like, all right, definitely got to learn how to go out of that. So as I got older, of course, you know, with age and, you know, dating, you know, I definitely became more confident in certain areas that I wasn't as a child. But I'm um, still insecurities came, you know, am I too big? Am I too tall? Am I too thick? Am I too wide? Are my boobs too small? Like for some reason, I thought about all those things because I always compared myself to what I saw. My aunts, my grandmothers, my cousins, you know, the people in my neighborhood, the people at school, I just automatically thought that, you know, when I became of age, I would have a certain kind of look. And when I became a certain kind of age, even after having children and then having that kind of look, I'm like, okay, what happened to me? Why don't I have this, but I have that, you know? And then I had all the people talk to me about, you know, loving what you have and appreciating what you have and not asking God for more than what you need. And, you know, how beauty's on your skin deep and I love yourself first. All those quotes that we listen to all the time that we sometimes feel like cliche, but in realistic, you know, reality, they are really true and hit home close to heart. So, you know, for me, learning how to deal with the insecurities was, you know, really not owning them, trying to step away from that, not trying to be the girl who was the issue, you know, not trying to be in an in-crowd, like you're trying to isolate myself to be out of the line, like out of the team all the time. So I wasn't on spotlight for people to be paying much attention to me. And I then I got comfortable with that, you know, I definitely am still a homebody, still a more reserved person, um, but can be outgoing as well. 
Um, but I feel like for me, it was really more of, okay, just don't draw attention to yourself. Just don't be in the position to have people look at you or, you know, have the spotlight on you, whatever the case is. But as I got to like my mid 20s, early 30s, you know, I definitely got more confident with myself as I grew up, you know, had jobs, you know, went to school, network, you know, just, you know, gain some confidence, you know, going out with friends, being more social. You definitely, I definitely learned, you know, um, you know, some more things, you know, what my color was, what was going on my skin, what the case is, or, you know, what my cutest hairstyle was, you know, so those things that, like, you know, weigh the balance at some point. But insecurities are real. Insecurities, in my opinion, can lead you to being lonely, being depressed, having anxiety. Um, it can have you always thinking that you're at the top of the conversation when you're not. It can have you in your head. So insecurities can be bad depending on who you are, the person, and how you tackle it and how you handle it. So for me, I think I never really handled it well. I definitely shut down a lot. I feel like for me, when I shut down and just isolate and do, do my own thing, I have my little time period when I'm in my cave and I come up and I feel comfortable. So it's definitely something I used to during that time where, you know, I did a lot of journaling. I found journaling was really good, writing my thoughts down, you know, making poems out of it or songs out of it or, you know, giving it to people who I felt like were going through the same mood to find them to relate. So, you know, that was something I could do too. Um, but in addition to that, it was just pretty much, you know, trying to do my best to have more confidence in myself, to believe in myself more, to want to, you know, tell myself you're beautiful, even when you don't feel beautiful, you know, remind yourself of these things, whether it's posters on a wall or the favorite picture of you is your screensaver to give you that uplifting moment, you know, I definitely look at things like that. Um, to currently therapy, speaking to a therapist regularly, talk about my emotions, my problems, my issues, having her help me pan me through it, you know, relax and late with and picking the bigger battles and learning how to, you know, bite the tongue when necessary and speak up when needed, you know, so those things that help me now because, again, it can tap into those insecurities, you know, who knows, you know, we all deal with things differently and how I respond, someone else wouldn't respond and some of us don't have patience, I feel like I have a lot of patience, some people have zero tolerance of patience at all, so it's all different for us, we all will look at it differently, we will handle it differently, but I think insecurities are something that can hold us back, you know, when we're just so nervous and scared of something because we don't want to face it or we don't want to be embarrassed or put on front street or on blast or be vulnerable. That insecurity can really make things, you know, a bubble for you because you got to want to stop out of that comfort zone, which is sometimes your insecurities. And everyone has insecurities. I don't want to believe anyone doesn't have insecurities. Some people just don't want to tell it, if anything, and that's cool. You own what you want to be out there unless you're an author telling your book and you just got the whole world in your business and you didn't know that was going to happen. But um, for me, it's like, I think I developed them just, you know, feeling like I didn't look like people around me and it was confusing to me. And, you know, when I didn't see, as I got older, I still didn't look like certain people. I'm like, okay, why does this stick out on me? Or why do I not have that? Or why am I this and this way and that way? You know, not always being a popular person throughout school or throughout my neighborhoods. Um, those things did, you know, weigh on me because my mom was a very popular person. She was well known in the neighborhood. Wherever she went, everyone always knew I was Kim's daughter. It was like, oh, that's Kim's daughter. That's big Kim's daughter. Like, my mom was very outgoing, um, very approachable, you know, funny, comic, or just start a joke or whatever the case is. She had a very bubbly personality, but street smart and book smart person. And, um, I didn't really relate to my mom that much. I was so different from her. I was quiet. I was timid. I was passive. I was insecure. And I like to really know my mom was insecure too, but she just didn't show it the way I showed it. So time for another sip. What I can say to that, if anything, is, you know, Definitely, you know, do things that make you feel better, whether it's writing down stuff in a journal, whether it's to a therapist, whether it's, you know, treating yourself, blushing on yourself, gushing on yourself, um, making yourself feel good, doing stuff you want to make you feel good, whether it's buying you something, getting a massage, getting your hair done, getting a shape up, um, you know, buying something you really want for yourself, but those things help you, that's good too, but um, it's good to soul search, you know, find out who you are, what you want to be, where you're going, what your journey is, so that helps, you know, with insecurities as well, because, Sometimes we're insecure about things that are not really worth being insecure about. And sometimes we're insecure about things that we shouldn't be insecure about because 
it's just all in my head and I live in my head 24 7 probably ain't my book gonna be in my head you know because I always I'm always in my head in my opinion always thinking stuff that no one's thinking thinking about months and future steps in advance of things that I shouldn't be thinking about and it's become common to my leadership because it just became second nature you know dealing with stress and anxiety and depression and all kind of things we all went through during the pandemic before the pandemic after the pandemic you know we're always going through different things and we'll be doing different things to you know feel better about it for ourselves so I say all that just to say, you know, insecurities has definitely tapped in for me for many years, you know, from, again, my height, my, my shoe size, um, feeling like I was too heavy or feeling like I was too slim or, you know, even the issue of having a pH balance issue or if I'm going to have a, a situation where I have excessive sweating and it's something for hydro, something, 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 which just means I sweat more than an average person, which means I need to take more showers than an average person, which means I need to use multiple deodorants most of the time, um, which just means that, you know, I have an issue I can't do much about, and um, they prescribed me some medication. I'm supposed to wear two to three times a week, um, and it's supposed to help me with the sweating. They recommended Botox under my armpits to control the sweating completely, but um, I didn't accept that. So we all have different insecurities, you know. To this day, I feel like one of the main insecurities I have is, you know, the sweat thing, you know, because it can be embarrassing. I take plenty of showers a day, and sometimes it can seem like, well, maybe she didn't take a shower. Maybe she skipped a shower. Who knows? Or maybe it also come off as in, damn, like she's really, really athletic. I guess that's the athletic life from her, or whatever case is. Or maybe it just comes off as in, you know, She's stinky. <laughs> I don't know, you know, but it's something that really bothers me. Um, I've had this situation since a kid. Um, I think one of my daughters may have it too. And um, it's something that is really stressful because, you know, you can look great, think you, you know, smell great, and you're not because you're used to your own body scent. So you may not pick up sometimes because you're so immune to your own scent that you may be a little bit off, you know? So that stresses me out. It definitely makes me never want to wear tank tops and halter tops because I'm always so insecure about that. And um, it's stressful, you know? We all have something we don't, you know, love. Some of us have bald spots or thinning hairs or gray hairs or a shorter leg or a shorter toe or, you know, we all got something that we don't like that everyone may not know about, but I feel like I'm tired of always hiding all my feelings in the closet about everything I don't like about myself. You know, I feel like I got way too much in my head way too much you know so it's time to let some of those things out because it ain't doing me no good in my head you know bothering me you know and I'm pretty sure if I'm going through this someone else is going through this someone else you know has this condition has do something something you sweat a lot you know and I mean as a girl it's kind of crazy because who wants to smell a lady not smelling good you know like that's kind of uh, you know especially if you think you're smelling fresh you know those things happen so you find yourself like me walking around with changing clothes when you're at work extra deodorant extra razors extra lotion extra towels extra soaps extra sprays extra oils you know and then you be a lot you know because you're doing a lot to make yourself feel comfortable so when no, no one approaches you and tell you hey girl you know like that's uncomfortable and that's happened to me before i've been at work at my current job and someone's going to sit aside and so i'm like hey girl you're a little not a good feeling, you know, especially when you're trying to be on top of it and you're trying to figure out what the problem is and how to fix it and, you know, the who, what, where, why, and how of it, you know, it could be kind of stressful, you know, it can be embarrassing, you know, luckily the person who approached me wasn't doing it in a malicious, embarrassing way, they were quiet and cool and respectful and, and gracious in how they handled me and, you know, I definitely needed that delicate touch and care, so I really appreciated her for what she did and, um, again, you kind of, like, don't want to get to that point when someone's telling you about you you want to like know it you know for sure for sure and sometimes shit happens you know I was working out a lot you know in the last few years like sometimes five to seven days sometimes I've totally slowed all that down that I'm not my goal weight so I need to get back on my ish but um that's gonna probably do maybe three ish days a week nowadays you know I don't know but I need to get into that groove though but I'm, I'm gonna find my way and um, at the end of the day, you know, insecurities are real. We often lead to each other. If you have a problem thinking it, you're thinking, or you know, someone who's been through it, or who's had these treatments, such as Botox or the Medicaid, which I currently have, or to me, someone who's just walking around with a whole bunch of clothes and sprays and deodorants in their bag because they have this condition and they just don't want to feel any way embarrassing. So this is what they do to make themselves feel better. So, you know, some people have insecurities about 
their lips. They may feel like the lips are too small or too big, or their nose is too big or too small, their eyes are too big or too small. Like there's so many things to be insecure about, but um, I want to open up a platform safely and openly to people to be able to discuss things they want to in real time and not have them feel some kind of way about the things they shouldn't feel any kind of way about. So why not FaceTime? Definitely want to do it again on Zoom, as I said. Um, respect people's privacy. Let them be on the platform openly and honestly to discuss things that bother them. Um, and mental wellness is important, you know, how we feel about ourselves, how we look, how we carry ourselves, our circle, our, our support system, our family, our loved ones, how they treat us, how we treat them, how they love one us, how we love on them, how we communicate, we don't communicate. That's all a part of wellness and wellness makes you feel good about yourself. And, um, you know, mental wellness, you know, can be a little bit more deeper in depth, but, you know, insecurities could be, you know, not necessarily mental wellness, but, you know, mental, you know, how you mentally think, you know, or you physically are smelling, you know, same thing, but um, that's it, that's all, I want to make this a really short video, because I definitely want to possibly go live on IG later on, but um, yeah, I'm going to definitely send this video out to my social media platforms, I probably will go live later on today, or tonight-ish, um, and probably touch more base about this whole discussion about insecurities, how do we get them, how do we get over them, what do we do with them, and I feel like I touch based on all of that, you know, it comes to our environment sometimes, or, you know, us not feeling like we fit in. And, um, you know, some of to go to therapy, some of them need to talk to people, some of them need to write, we need to exercise, some people do many things, so, you know, get over insecurities. Um, and some people just deal with it every day, you know, they find their own little niche, cool tricks and niche, you know, ways of getting around. So, you know, put their best foot forward, maybe they're over funny person or maybe they're a really outspoken person and you know it goes unnoticed or you know it doesn't really become an issue to people because the person just loves them because of how funny they are or maybe how handsome or pretty they are or how genuine or nice they are or whatever the case is and sometimes people don't want to embarrass you you know or sometimes people don't feel comfortable telling you hey sometimes people don't feel comfortable you know so it's so many different dynamics for it all but we all have insecurities and um, how we deal with them is important i'm going to talk about it because i have many despite how much weight i lost how many inches i lost how good you guys may think i look or how good i think i look right now i still have insecurities insecurities don't go away because we always want to you know do better we always want to you know work on ourselves more you know we want to try to not perfect ourselves but be better in different areas you know so it's like mm, i wish i could play basketball or i wish i know how to you know ride a motorcycle you know and because you don't have to make you insecure but you know kind of gives you a bit of motivation to want to do stuff differently but um you know within yourself personally working yourself as a professional development or personal development it's kind of good to be able to know your weaknesses in those areas because there's nothing wrong with sharpening up in every area nothing wrong with that at all you know i feel like more people should want to sharpen up all around you know shout out to everybody who's doing that you know and it's definitely a good thing but for me that's it and that's all my favorite quote that's it and that's all it's a little bit wine and uh, i'm gonna cut this video again i'll probably go live later on today or on ig or something like that i'm really not sure yet pretty sure it will definitely happen if not i'll probably play a replay of this but um insecurities, wine and FaceTime, do you have them, how do you get them, how do you get over them, where do they come from, what do you do, that's what we're talking about today, insecurities, 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 we all have them, if you say you don't, you're a liar, so it's great chatting with you guys, checking in, other people, so my social media platform was added earlier, have a good evening, be safe, and enjoy your video, and bye.